Hey, I'm Ryan Daniel Moran. I'm the founder of Capitalism.com, where we help entrepreneurs build compelling brands, get to 100 sales a day, and then have a multi-million dollar exit. And today I'm gonna to share with you a presentation that was given at one of our events about achieving a net worth of $100 million. This is a personal goal of mine, and so it's special to me to share this with you from someone that I know and trust, lives here in Austin, Texas, and has accomplished a very high nine-figure net worth by the age of 50. My goal is to accomplish a $100 million net worth over the next seven years, which is ambitious. But when you see that other people have done it and they have started from places that are less than what you have, it makes things seem really achievable. And I hope that's what you take away from this video. Someone sharing with you the exact strategies and the pathway to building an incredibly valuable net worth. All right, so this first part of David Osborne's presentation was such a mind changer for me and so many people who are in the audience, where he talks about you can't work your way into a $100 million net worth. You have to ask a completely different question. And if you can start seeing the world in this way, you will be fabulously wealthy. Watch this. You can only scale who, you can't scale what. A multimillionaire comes to you and says, what do I have to do to get to the next level? A billionaire says, who? Who do we gotta hire to get to the next level? You can't scale what? So I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to get to nine figures. I didn't know that was the term of the speech, but it's a good challenge. And I can tell you the first lesson I had going from eight to nine, going from 10 million net worth to where I'm at today, is that it's not about you. The only way you scale large is working through other people, through the who's. So then the question becomes, who do I have to hire right now that would take my business to the next level? So just pause for a second and write in your notes, like what's a key hire you could make right now that would take your business to the next level? Think of it, the title. It could be a person you already have in mind. It could, be, it could be a description. See, it's all about the who. There's no way you scale without the who, right? I'm lucky enough to have about 70 businesses that run and generate income, about 150 lines of income on my balance sheet. Every single one of those businesses is run by an amazing who. My number one goal is to be the most insignificant person in my organization, the least talented person in my organization. For, for me, it's easy. For you guys, it may be hard. You may have more talent than I have. But my goal is to be the least talented guy in every organization I run. And then go find the who's. So I'll give you a silly analogy. I hope one day <clears throat> that I'm going to meet um, Warren Buffett, because if I ever get like five minutes with him, I'll say, Warren, I want to offer you a job, and I'm going to pay you $1 billion per year. $1 billion per year. Hopefully, he'll say, doing what? He might just say, buzz off, son. But if he says, doing what? I'll say, your number one goal is to make me $2 billion. You're starting right away. Right? That's how you think. Like, it's the who. So every single person that I meet, I'm always asking myself, how could this person fit in this world that I'm trying to create, this empire that I'm trying to build. The answer to almost every question is who. Not what, not even how, it's who. Because when you can partner with somebody, you can create more together. My old business partner and I built a $15 million business that would have never existed had we not worked together. If it wasn't for him, the business would have never happened because it would have been a crazy idea in my head. If it wasn't for me, it would have been this tiny little business that made a few thousand dollars a month because I'm a big thinker, I'm the visionary. We needed each other. That's the question you need to start asking if you wanna be really, really rich. It's not what, not how, but who. So what's the first step? What's the first thing you need to do on this journey? Well, according to David, it is about carving your own path. It's about waking up from the matrix and realize that if you don't have a plan for your life, somebody else is gonna give you theirs and you're gonna unconsciously follow their plan instead of your plan. Here's what he said about it. In, the, in, in one of the movies that I love, that guys my age all love, young guys may not know what it is, but there's this movie called The, the Matrix, right? And in the movie The Matrix, Morpheus is standing there in this ultimate moment in the movie and he says, what do you want, the red pill or the blue pill? You're gonna take the red pill or the blue pill? And all of us think, oh, we're gonna take the red pill and we're gonna wake up from the matrix. So my belief is there is a matrix, but I don't know how to wake up from it all I know how to do is create my own reality within it. So write this down. The implicit system is my friend. The implicit system is my friend. 
And if you give me permission today, I'm just going to go a little bit deep with you, right? Because I don't know any other way to do it. The only way I've done it is the way I'm going to share it with you, okay? I do not deserve the success I have. I, I shouldn't have it. The way I've got here is the following, and I'm going to list it out for you in kind of a, a deep manner. So when you take the red pill, what does that mean? Well, in the movie, he wakes up and he's got like hoses in his back. doesn't look very attractive. But the way we all take it is like, yeah, I'm going to be wide awake, baby. I'm all in for life. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Just knocked my own tooth out. Yeah, I'm going to be all in for life. I'm going to be wide awake. I'm going to like take life as it comes. I'm not going to be anybody else's vessel. I'm not going to be anyone else's slave. I'm not going to be anyone else's servant. I'm not going to run their agenda. I'm going to run my agenda. Right? That's what it means. But my understanding of it and my experience of it is we fall back to sleep all the time. We're mostly asleep, right? So, so the question is, can you choose to be the playwright of your own play? Can you be the architect of your own house? So all I know how to do is, is wake up long enough to choose my destiny and then fall asleep back into my unconscious patterns that get me where I'm going. A lot of times you can hear somebody share that it's all about people and you're like, yeah, well, great for you. I don't know any of these people. The first way that you start meeting these people is become the type of person that attracts and serves the people that you need. That requires a tremendous amount of self-awareness, a tremendous amount of personal responsibility, and it's work and it's constant, it's lifelong. This past year, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, I don't deserve a $100 million net worth. I don't deserve the type of life that I want. I gotta become a different kind of person. And that journey will never end because hopefully you'll be growing until the day you die. So let's talk about how you start becoming that type of person. David laid out some of the personality traits and the habits of the people who become the person capable of bringing in the types of relationships, casting visions, and are worthy of $100 million net worth. How do you become that person? Start with these traits that David shares in this clip. All right, so how do you be the who that attracts people to you? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you right here. Like, this is my flight plan. One thing I learned about flying private is, you would think they're saying, hey, I'm going to New York, and they would just fly there, but they don't. If you ever ride up front and you listen, they're constantly making micro adjustments. They're going off path, they're going around weather, they're going around other planes, right? Pilots know this, I didn't know this, right? But they have a flight plan they log and then they moderate and change it the whole way. So this is my flight plan for 2019. So whenever 2019 or 18 or any year rolls out, I'm stoked. I've got it all right here. This is my flight plan for 2019. It's locked and loaded, it's epic, it's amazing. It's my agenda. I can't wait to live it. I can't wait to live this agenda. All right? Last year, my, every year I do an epic trip with my family. And the origin of this, by the way, in my 20s, all I did was work. Just to be clear, I, I think you have to have a work ethic. So when I said, I teased you guys about the number of hours, I think you've got to work the 20 years in 10 years. Like I did that in my 20s. I was trying to figure it out. Did a lot of stupid stuff, a lot of unnecessary work, but I worked really hard. In a way, you just prove to yourself you can. And then in my 30s, I sort of started setting up my businesses, like learning, organizing them, you know, building, building on what I had figured out worked and kind of shedding all the chaff, the stuff that doesn't work. And then in my 40s, I'm 51 now, probably, you know, I'm starting to be the oldest guy in the room. It's not any fun. I'd rather be much younger, but I am 51. Um, in my 40s, I took advantage of what I'd learned. I just kind of pounded and compounded my empire, built on it, and started making a ton, a ton of money. Um, so what I'm sharing with you is like just refined over, over 20 plus years. When I started, all my goals were business and money. My wife, then my girlfriend said, you know, dating you is like being in the backseat of your car. And I said, that sounds awful. Why would you put up with that? And she said, every now and then you put me in the front seat and it's so nice. And so when I married her, I endeavored to put her always in the front seat, which is why my goals always start with family. I always start with the family. What I realized is in my 20s, I sort of stole the decade of, of my life from the juicy fun stuff. Now I had a blast working, I got significance from working, so I'm not gonna say it wasn't fun for me. But I didn't do anything, I just worked, 25, you know, 27 to 35-ish. So now I put all the family stuff first, I put all the epic stuff first. I'm gonna come back to this why, why in a minute. So last year I took my family to see the Northern Lights, it was epic, it was incredible, and I loved it. And that's what I've got locked in for 2019, like, it's just epic. I got three kids, two of them still at home, and uh, my daughter's goal this year, nine-year-old, nine is to see the Grand Canyon. So I haven't figured out yet how, but we're going to do a wicked Grand Canyon trip. I don't know if we'll helicopter, whitewater raft, or whatever. I've got to figure out all the details. 
So I always start on this locked in life with the fun stuff, the family stuff, the purposeful stuff, the contribution stuff. Why? Let's go back to the why. Who, who do you need to build your business to the next level? You've got to attract the who. How do you attract the who? By being somebody that other people look up to. My mentor, billionaire Gary Keller, who I've been around my entire life, taught us life balance from the beginning. Fitness, health, relationships, spirituality, contribution. I can tell you that that's the kind of person I want to be, so I'm attracted to. If I'd been in a company in my 20s that said, your goal is to work 100 hours a week until you die, and by the way, if you need to take Coke and drink and do whatever to get yourself there, you should do it, I might have done that. I was impressionable. I was ambitious. I was 20 years old. If I'd been on Wall Street, maybe that's the life I'd live. But instead, I was with a guy that said, you've got to have balance. You've got to have a way of living your life. So I built this in. This is locked and loaded. That's 2019. But I want to share with you 2018. This is a journal that's almost ending. And I want to share with you that I have my, every quarter I review it. So if I go back to the beginning of 2018, right? That's cool. That's like, that was the backtrack. So there's 2018 first quarter, right? And then if I flip it forward, there's the next quarter. What I want you to see, if you can see that, maybe I hold it down there, is this, this is a dynamic living, breathing document. This is like my constitution with myself. And when I put on here, work out 240 times, I check off a Roman numeral every time I work out. I know that last year I worked out um, 216 times. I didn't hit my goal of 240. So I put it on here, I check it all the time. Read 30 books, be on TED podcasts, listen to 40 podcasts, uh, take my family on an epic vacation, have three daddy-daughter dates with my uh, nine-year-old, watch 10 Shark Tanks with her. So all of this stuff is in here. Like, it's an epic life. But when I started, I didn't follow through. Like, when I started in 25 years ago, I just would write stuff down, and I'd get 30%, 40% of it done. And that was my style. That was my life. But I just rededicated, rededicated, rededicated. So I think the number one thing is to be massively, massively purposeful and have goals in all areas of your life. So how does all of this translate into making a lot of money? Yes, it's about people and people are about who you become. But how does that translate into making a whack ton of money? In this next clip, David shares about how he thinks about money, how he strategizes, and exactly how he goes about achieving his goals that have made him so rich. Money is just stored energy, right? So money is energy. You can use it to do stuff. Like I can use money to go back and forth from Breckenridge to meet you guys, provided that storm that's rolling in doesn't shut me out. So I can do that. That's just money. It's just a time machine. It just changes your ability to get stuff done, right? So if money's energy, how do we earn money? What do we need to earn money? Energy. Thank you. The same thing. We have to have energy. So if you need energy and you're working 100 hours a week and you're not going to the gym and you're not working out, you're not eating right, you're not looking after your body, what are you doing to your long-term income-producing possibilities? You're robbing yourself. If you're, if, you're just at, if, you're, if you're married and you're working all the time and you're not looking after that precious relationship, the most important relationship you have, your wife or your husband or whatever, you know, your husband if you're a guy, whatever it is today, if you're not looking after that relationship, what, what are you doing? You're Jeff bezos yourself. You're going to lose $75 billion. It's not relevant, right? And then he'll marry someone else and in 10 years he'll be just annoyed at her, right? That's life. You've got to work on that relationship. You've got to work on your health. You've got to work on the relationship. What about if you're a guy that builds a billion-dollar business and your kids can't stand you? What good is that? You've got to work on all these pieces, right? You've got to put them all in your goals. You've got to focus on them and just make them part of your agenda. All right, so energy. Life is energy. So do you work out, do you get more energy or less energy? More. If you have a beautiful relationship with your wife, do you get more energy? Or husband, do you get more or less energy? And if you have great relationship with your kids, you have more or less energy. See, it's all a selfish, selfless, reinforcing way of nurturing your implicit system to give you everything you want. Because the more you get, the more you can get, right? Okay, so let's go back to the how, because you're like, okay, I get it. You got a great life. That's nice. So let's go back to the how. The how is simple. You know you got to manage your energy, right? You know you got to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. We talked about that a little bit, like slap yourself in the face, be real. What's working, what's not? Am I earning the money I need or not? Am I spending the time with my family or not? Am I working out like I need to or not? You get to sit down and just take a journal and just write down all your thoughts, like where am I, what would improve my life physically? What would improve my life mentally? What would improve my relationship? You just write all that stuff down and that becomes your goals. You got your vision. 
By the way, I just worked on a vision to get to 250 million in net worth, 25 million year in income. Why? Because I got to have a vision. I don't need the money. I always said to my wife, I'm working for you, honey. I'm working to put food on the table. She said to me about three years ago, we don't need any more food on the table. So you keep telling yourself that, little man. But that is bullshit. Am I allowed to swear in here? Anyway, she's right. It was bullshit. All right? So what do I do? Why do I do it? Because I want to stay engaged. I want to stay in the game. I went, I went on a vacation with my wife and my daughter and my son. We took like a 12-day vacation. It was awesome. But about day seven, you know what happened? I woke up. My wife's like, hey, can you go get me breakfast? I went and got her breakfast. I brought it back. My, you know, then my daughter woke up. She's like, hey, Dad, can you go get me something to eat? I'm hungry. So I went and got her something to eat. I thought, this is retired life. I just sit around and my, everybody tells me what to do. I don't want that. I want to keep building businesses. So I immediately got motivated, went back to my life and said, how do I get to 250 million in net worth and 25 million a year? Not because the money makes a difference. It doesn't. It makes no difference. But it's the game. It's the engagement. And then I threw in a little twist on my goals. Could I give away $100 million while making it to 250? So that's interesting. So now I've recreated the game and I'm keeping myself engaged while having fitness, health, relationship, nurture, contribution, all of the stuff, right? And I'm adding all of that in, okay? So now you've got your goals and you've got your energy. I cannot overemphasize to you how important energy is. Like, you've got to manage your energy. You've got to have a lot of energy. If you're pitching people, you've got to have that energy to pitch. If you're leading people, you've got to have that energy to lead, right? So you've got to nurture that. All right, in this last clip, to wrap everything up, David shares his step-by-step, -step, his thought process of how anyone can go about carving a path to a nine-figure net worth. So this is for you if you're like, just tell me what to do and what my future is going to look like. Here's what David says you need to do in order to have a $100 million net worth. There's no way you can get to be a nine-figure investor unless you build businesses. Real estate's a great investment. I love real estate. You can invest in real estate all day long, and you can be a 10, 15, 20 million a year guy when you're done. But if you want to actually you know, manifest giant wealth, you have to build a business. You have to roll out a business that has a multiple at exit. Most of you guys probably already know this. So, so that's the game we're playing to get to nine figures. When you're young, you can take massive amount of risk. And when you don't have kids, you should just be all in all the time. Nothing, nothing I like better than seeing a 20-something-year-old that quit their job to go all in for their business. Because what you're really getting, whether you win or lose, is the knowledge. All right. And then as you get bigger, then you've got to, like, nurture the dollars. It's all about the dollars. The dollars, you know, have to, have to earn a fair rate of return, right? So you have to take those dollars and invest them wisely. Warren Buffett's rule number one is don't lose any capital. Rule number two is see rule number one. Okay? That's with your investment dollars. But on the other side, on your aggression dollars, you go all in when you see something that wins. I was sitting with Richard Branson on Necker Island, not because he's my friend. No, I'm not name dropping because he's my buddy. I paid 50 grand to go to his island for a week. It was nice. And I was sitting with him, and he said, people said to me I got lucky. He said, I got out of the record business right when it was dying, and I got into the airline business. He said, and they're right. I did get lucky. He said, but you've got to put yourself in a position to get lucky. And that's what I would say to you. If you're all entrepreneurs, you've got to get out there and pivot, pivot, pivot until something works, and then just go all in for it. And I got lucky early. I got at Keller Williams early. I had no idea who it was. There was less than 1,000 people in the company. Now there's 190,000. I had a mentor that was a billionaire. Well, you know, at that time, he was worth negative net worth because he hadn't built you know, Keller Williams yet, Gary Keller. But today, he's uh, arguably a billionaire. And I just went all in. I was 20-something years old. I had nothing to lose. My mom was a realtor at his company. She was a legend, an amazing woman. And I just went all in because I didn't have any other option. And then it, it struggled, struggled, struggled. Back then, you know, a lot of them were failing. But we started having a breakthrough. And I just kept going all in and all in. And so I ended up the largest franchisee, more by default than anything else, just because I went all in. But I could see it was working. So I just read Blitzscale. Anyone read Blitzscale? It's a pretty interesting book. And he says what the new companies do is they come in and they pivot, pivot, pivot until they find something that works, and then they go all in. Right? So pivot, pivot, pivot. When something works, go all in. You need people, you need the right mindset, you need to become the type of person that is worthy of a $100 million net worth, and then you have to have a business that is gonna grow and going to scale that you can have a big exit around. That is specifically 
what we help entrepreneurs do here at capitalism.com. We do it in our events. We do it in our training courses. We do it with our mentorships. We do it with our NFT community. It is all about building businesses and having a multi-million dollar exit. You can find everything that you need to know for free on this channel. If you subscribe, you can go into the description of this video and see the free resources that we have to get you started and get you to 100 sales a day so you can have that big exit. Or you can come to the next event that we have where we have these types of speakers and these relationships relationships in the same room. If you go to capitalism.com slash Capcon, you can attend the next event and be in the audience where all of these opportunities and all these relationships are being brought to you. My name is Ryan Daniel Moran. I'm the founder of capitalism.com. I help entrepreneurs have multi-million dollar exits. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you hit that subscribe button. I hope you have an awesome kick-ass day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.